Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host, David Streggy, and today I have another review for you of a documentary uh, uh, made from a Kenosha man uh, uh, about uh, the Milwaukee mob. And it's uh, from a documentary director uh, by the name of Jason Love, and it's produced by Wayne Klingman of uh, Made Men Productions. And uh, I was contacted by Made Men uh, Productions uh, producer Wayne Klingman, who, ru who runs his own Milwaukee Mob podcast here in Milwaukee on blog radio. Um, and uh, this is basically a documentary that uh, uh, about the Milwaukee Mob Syndicate, starting with Frank Ballester. And... Uh, It involves a local historian and researcher that has written at least one or two books about the subject at the Milwaukee Mafia using documents, public photos uh, uh, of the uh, Ballastery family and its connections to the Mafia using a narration by Michael Corley, a voice actor and the narrator behind uh, the documentary Milwaukee Mob, uh, which this was filmed in 2018. I'd like to say that this is a special interest story because not on a n uh, normal basis do we have a group of people who wants to get together and talk about the, uh, the crime families behind some of the most historic events that have happened in the city of Milwaukee. I mean, I know we know that Al Capone had a hideout here in Wisconsin. We also know that Johnny Depp, uh, uh, his movie, Public Enemy, was filmed here partially in Milwaukee. It was also based on a true event that happened in Milwaukee at uh, one point in time. But how many people have focused upon the balustrades and their influence in the city of Milwaukee? Even I know that there is an influence of the Ballastery family here in Milwaukee, which I believe that part of the family owns Moe's Irish Pub downtown, as well as the managing... Uh, managing a pizza chain here in Milwaukee. The documentary begins with introducing us to both Wayne Klingman uh, and uh, local historian and author uh, uh, Gavin Schmidt and going between voice actor and narrator Michael Corley to bring about how the hierarchy of the Milwaukee mob works from the boss to the underboss to the consigliere to the soldier and how one becomes a made man or an associate of the Milwaukee mob. We learn how Frank Balistre was able to rise from rock bottom associate to become the boss of the syndicate in Milwaukee. For you have to be of Sicilian or Italian race uh, to be a mob man, a made man, which is in actuality, cl uh, everyone close to the mob uh, or has something to do uh, with the real estate. Uh, with real estate, or if someone owns a club or had something to do with the prostitution, they were considered associates. Even in the late 70s, there was some mob members of African-American descent that they could never be part of the full-blown mob if they weren't Italian or Sicilian, or Sicilian. You also had to be trustworthy, just like everyone else in the in learning the ropes. You had to gain the trust of each and every member to rise up within the ranks of the mob. And I believe this goes with all the family members of the mob in any city. Traditionally, in order to become a made man, you had to kill someone and go through some kind of a ceremony, confirming that you were, in fact, the one killing in the name of the job in order to become a made man. Although the interesting fact is that the man who was called Big Frank or Fancy Pants and or the Mad Bomber and probably many other nicknames, it is not known whether Frank Ballastre has ever actually killed anyone, even though we know exactly how many, uh, uh, how a man becomes a made man. So it could be just because of his family name and his connection to a previous boss that helped wager his influence in becoming the head boss of the Milwaukee mob. Ultimately, I think this was a very informative or, or, or informative documentary on the rise and fall of this man. I love that it connects the Teamsters and 
and doesn't exactly rule out that the Teamsters behind the union factions that were supposedly run by Joe Campanella were in fact one and the same, even though it doesn't exa uh, exactly explain that the two are the same. It makes a suggestion that there really is no difference. I don't want to say too much more about the documentary because I want, uh, because I do want people uh, to go and see uh, the documentary themselves. If anything, the one thing that I learned was how far the Milwaukee mob was connected and how much Frank Ballesteri did not want to share power with anyone. And it was because of this that eventually his power fell. And though I knew about his nickname, the Mad Bomber, uh, 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 er, and as a possible in, uh, and though I did not know about his nickname, the Mad Bomber, uh, because of the possible influence in Las Vegas, I think that if you enjoy this kind of documentary, uh, uh, this kind of documents. Uh, about the made men in the mob family. Uh, I think you'll find that you'll enjoy how informative Gavin Schmidt is and how matter of fact he is and how he describes how the hierarchy works. And you can almost see that he almost admires how the organization was run. I think you'll also enjoy how informative Wayne Klingman is. And I believe that Klingman is obviously a man who knows the history and how the mob factions work because uh, 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 maybe because it was uh, or has been his focal interest. And I'm glad that they brought their vision of how the Milwaukee Mafia worked to light. I hope that you have found my review of this documentary factual and hopefully you get a chance to check the film out. I was very intrigued when I was contacted to see what I thought and maybe I said too much. But I, being a man living in Milwaukee, have always been intrigued by the criminal syndicate and the mob classes and the organizations behind all, you know, all the business dealings that go under the radar, as there is an air of mystery. And who wouldn't want to make money in, this, in some way, shape, or form? Ultimately, it's up to you if you go up, out and enjoy uh, informational films. And, and I suggest that you seek this film out. I do and will certainly recommend this documentary to all the documentary lovers out there. I do believe that it was very well put together with clips and possible reenactments of men making business deals and card games. So there you have it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed my description of this uh, uh, documentary. Uh, the film stars Gavin Schmidt as uh, researcher, author, and historian. Wayne Klingman as host of the Milwaukee Mob podcast and interviewee. Um, Michael Corley as the voice actor and narrator. Now there's one more thing I want to say, uh, say before I and uh, this uh, review. Um, when the documentary came out, uh, there were many people who made uh, uh, made critical notice of Wayne Klingman's speech impe impediment. And I have a speech impediment myself. And I know that um, I've been ridiculed on my channel. And uh, it's because I have a disability. And uh, sometimes I have way too much going through my mind. I'm trying to get it out, and uh, you, you gotta you, you gotta know that it's not that the person is, you know, uh, impaired or anything like that. They have a lot to say, and they have a lot to get out. And you just have to understand that there are people like that out there. And it incensed me uh, to learn that pe uh, people were saying that about Wayne. Uh, Wayne. He's a very good man, and uh, I think that uh, he, uh, he, need, uh, he needs to have a, a little bit more uh, uh, clout uh, than he was given. So in any case, hopefully you have enjoyed my description of this film. Like and subscribe to my page if you have not. Definitely check out my other reviews. And thank you for the traffic ahead of time. Uh, have a good evening, uh, morning, or afternoon, wherever you are. Um, thank you so much.